Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Breakfast in the Classroom. This is a webinar on how to transition your Breakfast in the Classroom program from hot to cold. Next slide. So I just want to go through the agenda and how we're going to spend our next hour of time together. I'm going to start out with some housekeeping notes, and then I'll dive into introductions so you can see who's going to be on this webinar. Then we'll talk about hot breakfast in the classroom, how to, the ins and outs of hot breakfast in the classroom. We'll go over some menu ideas and some planning, and then talk a little bit about the new USDA food standards, and then we'll have time for Q&A. And I want to point out that we do have a question and answer box that should be on the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you don't see it, click those three little dots that say more, and then you'll be able to see the Q&A. Anytime you have questions throughout the webinar, and certainly at the very end of the webinar when we have designated Q&A time, pop those questions in. I may be able to answer them throughout the webinar, so don't feel free to wait at all. We also have the chat box that you can use at any point in time. And this webinar is going to be rather interactive. Our speakers are gonna ask you to share your own experiences uh, about breakfast in the classroom. So, so feel free to use the chat box as a way to communicate with us and with um, everyone who's on the webinar. I also wanna say this webinar is being recorded. So the recording and the slides will live on the Center for Best Practices website where you can find all of our webinars. We will also be sending you the recorded webinar and slides in a follow-up email and any other follow-ups that we might have. And then, like I said, put the questions in the Q&A box. Next slide, please. All right, introduction. So it's nice to see everyone here today. My name is Summer Kriegsauser. I am a senior program manager at No Kid Hungry, and I'm delighted to be joined by Donna Martin, director of school nutrition programs at Burke County Public Schools in Georgia, and, and Donna will be able to share all of her insights about breakfast in the classroom. Next slide. So we're gonna do a poll. I would love to find out who on the webinar is currently doing breakfast in the classroom because that helps us tailor the webinar better to you who is in the audience. So a quick yes or no, do you currently have a breakfast in the classroom program? And we'll give folks a couple of minutes to set uh, or to uh, enter their answer into the poll. And I can't see the, um, the results. So Hannah, who is on the back end, um, Hannah, I'm gonna have to have you announce the poll results. Well, results. Let's close in five, four, three, two, one. Let's see what our final answer is. Oh, excellent. Okay, so 82% of you who responded said you do have a breakfast in the classroom program. So those who don't, um, maybe are just on to check things out, want to see what the options are. So Donna, hopefully that helps you in how you're going to move forward with the webinar. And with that, next slide, I believe I am passing the mic to Donna to take it away. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to switch here so I can see my screen. So um, I'm sorry, let me. All right. So um, my name is Donna Martin, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. So I'm getting to talk to you about one of my very, very favorite subjects, and that is breakfast in the classroom. And I think during COVID, a lot of people started doing breakfast in the classroom. And that was just a great opportunity to do it. But a lot of people since COVID have quit doing breakfast in the classroom. So hopefully I'm going to inv invigorate you and give you some great new ideas. And I'm going to give you a chance at the end of the webinar to share what you're doing with breakfast in the classroom or grab and go or um, whatever option you're doing for breakfast and what your questions are. So next slide. So just to tell you a little bit about my district, um, if you see on the slide, it, on that little red area in Georgia, we are a very, very large 836 square miles district, but we have not very many people in the district, 22,000, so we're a large rural district. We offer breakfast, lunch, supper, after-school snacks, summer feeding, fresh 
vegetable grant. We are 100% CEP. So my kids very, very much need all these programs. So we offer every program that is available. We have a very high um, free and reduced population, but we are 100% CEP because of that. But we have great breakfast participation, 76% and great lunch participation. So hopefully what I'm gonna tell you is gonna give you a lot of good ideas. Next slide. So just a few facts about breakfast. The breakfast program started in 1965. And I find that really hard to believe because I became a school nutrition director in 1990. And at that point, my school had 58 schools and only two of them had breakfast. And by the time I left this big district of 58 schools, we had breakfast in all of our schools. So I really found it hard to believe that it's been around that long. 91.2% of school districts participate in breakfast. So a lot of states mandate that if you have a certain percentage of free and reduced that you have to do the breakfast program. But there are still schools out there that do not have breakfast. And it's usually because they have a very low free and reduced percentage. But I feel like if 10 kids qualify for breakfast, you ought to have breakfast for them because they really do need it. You know, 14 million students eat breakfast every day. And what's interesting about that is that we have about 30 million that eat lunch. So we don't do near as good a job with breakfast as we do with lunch. Next slide. So ask yourself these questions. Do you want to improve your students' test scores? Do you wanna increase breakfast participation? Do you wanna stop worrying about buses being late at school? Do you wanna decrease discipline and behavior problems at your school? Next slide. Do you wanna lower the risk of your students being overweight? Do you wanna lower risk of students being food insecure? Do you wanna decrease tardiness at your school? Do you wanna increase student attentiveness? Do you wanna improve the nutrition status of your students? Then if you answered yes to any of these questions, I have the answer for you. And that is, next slide, grab and go or breakfast in the classroom. Next slide. So, you know, why breakfast in the classroom? We know that breakfast, you know, they say it's the most important meal of the day. I wouldn't say it's always the most important meal of the day, but my job as a school nutrition director is to provide the teachers with students ready to learn. And we know if they are hungry, they cannot learn. And so we know that is important. We know that kids really love eating in the comfort of their own surroundings. You take a four-year-old and try and send them down to the cafeteria by themselves to eat breakfast, it's not going to happen. So they're just not going to eat. And the classrooms, I mean, I know a lot of your cafeterias are too small. You can't get the kids in there and you're standing over and them going, hurry, hurry, eat, eat, eat. You know, somebody else needs to come in and eat. It certainly increases breakfast participation. And the children, if the buses are late, you don't have to worry about it and the kids have plenty of time to eat. It reduces tardiness because they're, if they're a little bit tardy and the kids are eating, it's no big deal. It definitely improves their scores. And that's something I always tell the teachers and I tell the principals that it improves their scores and sometimes that convinces them to do breakfast. Next slide. So teachers, one of the things that I found when we started the Breakfast in the Classroom program that our principal said they love the most about the program is that, you know, once the kids get to school, it's reading, writing, and arithmetic, and it's go, 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 go. But what they loved about the Breakfast in the Classroom program is it gave the teachers an opportunity to build a strong bond with their students. They got to know them. They got to ask them what's going on in their home. And what we're really learning about kids is, is developing those relationships make them really want to perform better in school, makes them share a lot of stuff with the teachers. And one of my principals said he wouldn't ever stop the program just because he liked this part of the program so much. The nurses love it because there aren't any more stomach aches. And it certainly reduces the stigma of being free. And it only takes seven to 15 minutes to eat. It's not a lot of time. You don't have to clean the serving lines. That's what you need to tell your staff is that you don't have to clean the serving lines. And that saves a lot of time. And then it helps them, you know, feel comfortable eating if they don't have a sibling to go to the cafeteria with or a teacher. And also, you can make a lot of money when you increase your breakfast participation. Next slide. So what are the disadvantages? I always want to tell you the good and the bad and the ugly. Nothing, everything is not perfect. It's hard sometimes to get the buy-in from the teachers and principals, and I'm going to talk about that. 
And you have to train the teachers what a reimbursable meal is, especially if you're doing offer versus serve. You can do offer versus serve. So you're going to send down the four components and the kids can choose to not have one of them. Now, keep in mind, they have to have one, a fruit. But if they get to only not eat one of them, they're going to definitely have a fruit on the tray. So it's not that hard to do offer versus serve. The menu is much more limited when it's in the class and you don't have all the choices. And um, also the items are more expensive. So your prepackaged items do cost more. And if you don't have the staff to package them yourself, and you do need a lot more storage space because of the packaged items. So let's talk about convincing the principal. Next slide. That is the hardest thing because, you know, the principal rules the roost and he or she is going to make the final decision of whether or not you're going to have breakfast in the classroom. Next slide. So one of the things I love to do is try it during testing week. So they always think testing week is when they want to make sure those kids have breakfast. And if you do it during testing week and they see how great it is, they'll want to continue. And I also kind of tell them, why is it good for testing week and not the rest of the year? The kids are learning all year long. We need to have this all the time. Have a principal go to this another school and see it in operation. We give all our teachers and our para pros who work with the program in the classroom free breakfast. That is legal and that encourages them to want to do it. And then they need to have, so they're not grouchy either, they need to have breakfast. I gave the teachers, um, the principals, all these articles on test scores, how to improve test scores, and they're all about their test scores. And when they think this is going to improve their test scores, they're much more likely to do it. I started with suggesting trying one grade. So we started with the four-year-olds because it was hard to get them in the lunchroom, and then we moved it on up. Find a teacher who worked with breakfast in the classroom in another school, and they can talk about how much they like it. And then the other thing I did was I had the principals call another principal in another school and talk to them about the program. That made them go all in. Next slide. So why do people not want to have breakfast in the classroom? They say because it's going to cause roaches. And I tell them, no, it is not, because I provide them with cleaning wipes. I provide them with strainers to strain the milk and to strain the cereal. I provide them with sweepers. And I provide them with trash bags and all this kind of stuff. So as long as you let the, I put trays on the table for the kids to put their food on, it does not increase roaches. And the other thing is I say the teachers already have food in the classroom anyway. We all know that. The teachers don't want the extra work. It's not that much extra work on the teachers. A lot of times the kids can fill out all the paperwork. The teachers don't have anything to do, but enjoy their free breakfast. It'll cut an instructional time. No, it does not. It usually gives them much more instructional time because a lot of times the kids eat and do their homework and stuff at the same time. And they don't want cold breakfast all the time. Well, that's why we're going to talk about hot breakfast today. Next slide. So how do you start a successful hot breakfast program? The first thing you do is you contact your vendor and find out what hot products they have available because you don't want to necessarily have them bring in products but you know if those products are already available what individually wrapped items they have then you know that they're really popular and that you're going to be able to get them do a taste test with the students get them excited about it find out which products that they like and you find out which ones are available plan a menu and I'm going to share with you how to do that Pan up the items the night before. So when you come in in the morning, you just pull those racks out, put them in the oven, pop them in a bag and send them down the hall. Easy peasy. Next slide. All right, so I'm going to give you lots of menu ideas. These are all the things I have seen people put on their hot breakfast items. And when you see the IW behind them, it means they're already individually wrapped. So if you are having labor issues, you don't have to worry about wrapping your items. These items come in wraps. So bagels, sausage breakfast bagels, um, biscuits. Now, I am from the South, but a lot of people like biscuits, whether you're from the South or not. But you can sausage biscuits, chicken biscuits, egg and cheese, ham, steak biscuits, sausage twin patties. Like my high school students love the little twin sausage biscuits. That's their favorite breakfast. Um, breakfast bagels, pancake and sausage wraps, pancake sausage sticks, pizza sticks, pancake sandwiches. I'm going to show you pictures of all these. Individual wrap French toast sticks, French toast glaze, frutals. That's one of my high school and middle kids' 
favorite breakfasts. Hot pockets, breakfast, eggs, sausage, and cheese, yummy. Um, Belgian waffle sticks. And we're in the South, we like cheese grits, but other places in the country like oatmeal for breakfast. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Breakfast burritos, bagels and cream cheese, hot or cold, hot and ham, hot ham and cheese sandwich, grilled cheese and cheese quesadilla. I'm gonna show you how to do a lot of these. Next slide. So if you don't get these individually wrapped items, which we are struggling to get some of those individually wrapped items right now, this is a list of things that you can individually wrap yourself. It doesn't take much time. And you know, you might get a high school student or a sub or something like that. And the thing is, if you individually wrap your own items, you save a lot of money. So wrapping these items, baking off the biscuits and putting the sausage and the chicken patties in there, it is not that hard to do. And you can do it and put it in your freezer or just do it the day before and bring them out the next morning. Next slide. So this is what it looks like when they're racked up on the right-hand side. This is the individually wrapped things. And some of them you put in the cooler, some of them you leave them in the freezer and you just take them out and, and put them in the oven the next day. Slide. So these are all some individually wrapped items that I want to show you. So on the bottom right is cinnamon um, waffles and blueberry waffles. And what's great about all of these individually wrapped things is you don't have to provide any syrup with them. So that's something people complain about all the time. Well, I don't want this syrup everywhere. You don't have syrup. It's already in all of these projects. The, next, the slide on the left is a pancake with a sausage in it. It's not on a stick, but it's very similar to that. Very popular. Next slide. So this is your typical, like your corn dog, but it's your sausage pancake on the thing that's individually wrapped. The pancake sandwich is amazing. It's got a sausage patty in the middle of it. Pizza bagels, always a hit with the kids. Next slide. And the pizza strips, we've had trouble getting them this year, but if you can get them, they have mozzarella cheese and pepperoni in them. And it's really one of the kids' favorite, but that's sausage biscuits and chicken biscuits. And then depending on what part of the country you're in, the egg, sausage, cheese, burritos are very popular at breakfast. Next slide. So these items are very popular with all our kids too. The mini cinnies, I will have to admit, is their favorite. The fruitals that I was talking about come in cherry and apple. Our kids like both of them. But the mini pancakes, the mini French toast, and the mini waffles, like I said, they have syrup already in them ready to go. So you can reassure the, the teachers of that. Next slide. So look on, you know, go to, we just had our state school nutrition meeting. And when you go to it, check out what's new. People are always, you know, coming up with new ideas for breakfast. This one is spicy cheddar and egg cheese pocket. It sounds delicious to me. So look out for new items and taste test them with your kids. Next slide. So this is just showing you, you could wrap your own with the, you know, those individual aluminum foil wraps that you might do your hamburgers or your hot dogs or whatever. And just that's individually wrapped pizza, easy, easy to do. Or you can do a sandwich that if it's going to be cold, you can individually wrap it with saran wrap, which is very inexpensive and, and it's ready to go. So we do these econo pack bags and we, we, our kids love a grilled cheese sandwich for breakfast and they were very expensive. They were like a dollar each. So I went to Econo Pack and they provided me with these bags that have holes in them. And all we do is we take a couple of pieces of bread and put some cheese in between and we put them in these bags and we put them in the oven and toast them off and we have grilled cheese sandwiches. Very inexpensive, but you can also do you know, other kind of biscuits and things like this in these plastic bags, and they're very cheap, very easy to do. Next. So we have this sophisticated packaging machine, I call it our I Love Lucy machine that I'm sure hardly any of you have, but I had some extra money one year and I, I decided to buy this packaging machine. So I package up fruit to go down for breakfast. I package up hot oatmeal. I package up cold, hot um, grits. So all the items that can put, be put in the freezer or put in the cooler and, and sent and put in the oven the next day. Next picture. This is a tabletop packaging machine that is very easy. I have one in all of my kitchens. And so a lot of my kitchens will just do individual packaging. It's very easy to use. You just slide the plates through and you can package up like fruit cocktail or mandarin oranges or anything like that. They're cut up oranges to go down to the classroom but you can also package up your 
oatmeal and things like that if you don't have a big I Love Lucy machine. Next slide. So this is what the oatmeal looks like when it comes out. And our kids, what, what is better than a warm oatmeal? Um, and these containers, the black containers, um, can, you can cook in the oven up to about 300 degrees. And so you just take them out of the cooler, put them in the oven and send them down to the classroom. Thanks. This is um, the kids eating the oatmeal. They really did like it. Uh, my kids don't eat oatmeal in the South. So we put some um, apples in it and a little bit of milk and a little bit of brown sugar, trying to get them interested in liking it. And then after that, we kind of could back off on some of those things. Next slide. So this is a breakfast in the classroom menu. So I always on Monday morning do a cold item because you know, you're coming in and everybody's just kind of getting going. I don't know what it is, but you forget everything over the weekend. So we usually do yogurt cup and granola, or we do cereal or something like that. And then every other day of the week, we do a hot breakfast item. And then we just send down fruit and juice and milk. So you can see many cinnies. And I give the managers a choice. So they can do the pancake stick or the pancake wrap or the pancake sausage sandwich. So I, I give them some flexibility, but I, I do plan menus for them. Next slide. So you can see on this week's menu on Monday, we start with cereal. Our kids love cereal, so we didn't get rid of cereal, but um, the rest of the week is, is hot items. Next slide. So the next decision you have to make is, are you gonna deliver it to the classroom or are you gonna have the kids come pick it up? If you are short staff and you're concerned about doing breakfast in the classroom, that you're not gonna have the staff to take all the stuff down to the classroom, have the students come pick it up. School districts that do that, the kids are so proud. It's like they, they are so special getting to come pick up the, um, the breakfast items. You know, in my district, I told my staff I was paying them to exercise. They all lost about 10 pounds each when we started the breakfast program. Next slide. From delivering the stuff down to the classroom. So these are the hot bags that we put the hot items in. So each one of my classrooms has a small bag and a large bag because some items do not, you know, like if you're just putting 20 chicken biscuits in there, you can put it in the small bag on the right. But if you're doing a lot of like waffles and things like that, then you might need the big bag. And so what they do is they just write the name of the classroom on there and how many kids and that, that way they know how many items to put in the bag. Next bag. Next slide. So this is my staff going down the hall and we use buckets to put our ice and our milk and our juice and our fruit. And you can see the trays that we send down. We, we wash them like once a week or something like that for them. So we give them the trays to put on the table so that the kids do not make a mess. But that's why I laugh. The carts can get pretty heavy, but I laugh that I pay my staff to exercise. Next slide. So these are the carts that the kids come and get. And you can see on the top is usually the hot items. On the bottom is the cold items. Next slide. It's really easy for the kids to grab these and take these down the hall. And then that saves a lot of labor and you get them to bring them back after, after breakfast is done. Next slide. These, I love these little red, red um, flyer carts. I think the kids love pulling these little wagons down to the classroom. And, um, and you can see in each one, it's different how they've packed them differently, but you can see the kids just think they're so special getting to do this. Next slide. So this is another one you can see where they have the red and the blue and the blue is probably for the cold and the red is for the hot items. And so it's, it's pretty easy. Next slide. So I came across these recently, and I think these are awesome stackable containers, and they're for hot or cold items. So you can put a whole crate of milk in them, and you can put hot items in another one, and it'll hold the temperature for a while. And I think these would be awesome if you're doing grab and go in the halls, because you could take a lot of product down, so you don't have to keep coming back, and you don't have to ice as much down or, or keep it hot. But I like these stackable items. Next slide. So this is if you're doing grab and go breakfast. And what I love about grab and go breakfast is you're able to offer a lot more choices. And several of you had asked questions about what do you do when you have hot leftovers and what do you do with the leftovers and things like that. When you do grab and go in the halls, we do it in my schools at the middle school, we have three halls. And as the kids get ready to go down the sixth, seventh and eighth grade hall are these parts that I'm gonna show you. 
And so they get to choose their breakfast. So whatever is left, we immediately take back to the kitchen and we do not waste it. So that's what I love about grab and go. And what I always do in my grab and go menus is I always have a hot item. I always have a cold item and I always do cereal every single day. So the kids always know that they're going to have something that they like. And then I put the fruit and the juice and the milk. So you can see these, these menus on what I offer. And we've also started doing smoothies at our middle school and high school in, in all of our grab and go carts. And those are a big hit. And those are a lot easier to do when you do grab and go. Next slide. This is another week of menus. It just shows the variety of things that you can do. So like I said, we put out those two ounce big bowl cereal. We put out yogurt, string cheese, blueberry muffins, things like that. And then the hot items are pizza sticks, ham biscuits, chicken biscuits. So the menu's not very complicated. And I find this is a lot less work than breakfast in the classroom. So they still come by, they get their items and they take them to the classroom to eat but you don't wind up with all the leftovers. So if you're gonna to get to choose a model, this is the model I would choose. So this is the cart set up. You can see that we have um, the milk and juice are at the beginning and we have ice underneath it and that's our fruit and then our cereal. And then that's our cold, cold sandwich, some, oh, our hot cheese grits and our sausage biscuits. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we just do the boats. You can do the boats or you can give them a bag to put it in, whatever you want. And those carts just roll down the hall, easy. So this is second chance breakfast. So a lot of people do this in a, a high school where the kids come to school, like in some of my counties in, in this area, they come to school like at seven or 7.30 in the morning. And I'm sorry, they're just not ready to eat breakfast at 6.30 or seven in the morning. So. This second chance breakfast is usually done after the first class and the bag, and you can set it up like grab and go, or you can just have the bags out there ready and they just grab a bag and they go. So you have to make sure you have really popular items. But I think second chance breakfast for middle school and high school is another option to capture those kids that just are not ready to eat first thing in the morning. Next slide. So I want to make sure that if you do hot breakfast, you're going to realize you need a lot of oven space. So it's not going to be batch cooking. You're going to be coming in and cooking everything all at once. So make sure you have plenty of oven space. So we have always at least two double stack convection ovens. We also have a combi oven in all my kitchens. So we have a lot of equipment, but you definitely need a lot of equipment to do this. Next slide. You also need more freezer space. You, you need to realize that when you have individually wrapped stuff, it takes up twice as much space as it does if it comes not individually wrapped. So if you have a case of pizza, it's usually gonna take two to three cases if it's individually wrapped, a lot more space. So when I got those equipment grants that were, came available for my schools, I put an outdoor freezer in at all of my schools. And that way it allowed me to make sure I had plenty of room for for breakfast in the classroom or grab and go. Next slide. So this is why we do it. The kids do love it. They do love having their friends to talk to. They don't like being pushed, raced, rushed, having to get out. Next slide. And so you can see the variety of choices. Um, one, one thing, they're, they're on their trays, they're eating on their trays. In the other classroom, they're not. But I provide Clorox wipes for all my classrooms, and the teachers love that. And they just wipe down the desk. And they get the kids to set out the food. They get the kids to wipe down the desk. So it is really not a lot of work on the teacher's part. Next. So this is, you know, what would work best for your school? So, you know, you've really got to decide if you want to go for grab and go or you want to do breakfast in the classroom. So I've switched a lot of my schools started out as breakfast in the classroom and I switched them to grab and go and I convinced the principal and the teachers because they were I was able to offer a lot more choices. And I usually leave one station up way after the bell to catch all those kids that are late. Because one of the beauties of breakfast in the classroom is that if the kids come late, the food is still there. With doing the grab and go breakfast carts and things like that, I leave one set up so that the kids are running late or the buses are late or they're coming in from a doctor or dentist appointment or they ever slept or whatever, they still can get breakfast because we do not want those stomach aches. We do not want those hungry kids. And we want them ready to learn. 
So what would work best for your school? So at this point, I would love an opportunity for y'all to share what you're doing in your schools and what ideas you have that have worked for you. And I'm gonna look at the questions. Yeah, folks can put their um, their best practices and their innovations and creative uh, ideas in the chat box. Okay. Um, All right. Well, I'll look at, I'll answer the question first. The oatmeal, we prepack it in those little packaging machines that we have. So I do not trust giving hot water to kids. Are you kidding? You, you would be run out of town. So we make, we prepackage our oatmeal. We mix it up and um, we do it in our tilt, tilting skillets and stuff or in the ovens or however. It's really easy to make. And then we run it through our packaging machines and we, you can do it in the desktop packaging machines that are easy for each school to have. And you don't have to have a central kitchen to do it. So we prepackage our, we prepackage our own. Um, so, so the, there's a question in here about leftovers. And so that's one thing, one reason I mentioned about the grab and go. If you do grab and go, then you don't have any leftovers. If you do um, breakfast in the classroom, you have to talk to your health, local health department because some local health departments will allow you to, if the, the food has been kept at temp, it's kind of like having it on the serving line. If it's been kept at proper temperature, you can cool it and reheat it to send down the next day. So that's exactly what we do in our district. A lot of times on Friday, we have we send down a variety of things to the classroom and the kids get so excited because they go, oh yeah, I wanted the mini thinnies or whatever. And they kind of fight over the things, but we do a really good job of keeping ours at temp so we don't. And then sometimes actually the, the managers will take the leftover if it's this chicken biscuits and if it's a meat and bread grain com um, combo, they'll serve it at lunch. And so they'll tell the kids they have to pick up two sausage biscuits or two chicken biscuits as, in place of their entree. And a lot of the kids get really excited about, about doing that. So that, that's just another option. And Donna, there was another question that came in that I asked a little bit more. The question says, for second chance, how do you know if the student has ate uh, or not? And I asked if this is in relation to counting and claiming. So I'm wondering if that person can give a little bit more um, insight upon what specifically they're looking for. And then another new question just popped into the um, chat box, or not the chat box, excuse me, the q and I don't know if you can see that one, Donna. Um, oh. Yes, yeah, I'll go back to that. But yes, so um, how long is your breakfast cycle was a, a chat? We actually have a six week lunch cycle. So we have a six week breakfast cycle. So we plan out our breakfast cycle for the whole year. And so um, we, there are so many options as you, you saw that literally we were able to do a six week cycle and we just repeat a few things a couple of times that we do a six week cycle, but you could do a two week cycle menu. And actually in my high school and my grab and go schools, the cycle menu is only like two week long, two weeks long because they offer so many choices. So about counting and claiming, we actually track the teachers in the classroom. So the teachers have a, um, a sheet with all the kids' names on it and um, their names on it. So they mark how many non-reimbursable breakfasts are served. So if there's like a teacher and a pair of pro, they, they put two in there. And then those sheets are collected when we collect the breakfast part, the breakfast um, bu buckets and stuff to go back to the kitchen. They're given to the person who does all that. And then we enter the kids, even though we are our CEP, we could click them all. We don't, we actually enter them by name. So we pull up the class roster and we click the kids that eat. So there's just a check and we look at the attendance rosters to, to see, you know, we can always go back and double check to make sure that the kids were there, but we mark and we track it by. And if we're doing grab and go, we do click the kids for grab and go because there's no way to to keep track of them but once they've gotten past us there's no way for them to turn around and come back and eat again so what you're worried about is a kid eating two or three breakfasts and just passing the cart and eating over and over and over again but when they pass the cart and go down the hall there's no way for them to come back we would see if they came back to get a second breakfast so we feel comfortable with that whereas in the classrooms we really need the teachers to 
we look at the kids when they come by to make sure it's a reimbursable breakfast. So we don't have to do any training with the teachers, but in the classroom, we have to train the teachers. So when we have new teacher orientation, and then I talk to all the teachers at the beginning of the year, I go around from school to school and I remind them about why do we have to tell the kids to pick up a fruit or vegetable at lunch? What is a reimbursable breakfast? But then they get the advantage of getting a smoothie for breakfast or getting, you know, they get free breakfast if they participate with us in the program. Great. I'm gonna go to the questions. Several, several of you sent in questions ahead of time during the registration process and um, just in the process of this moment, our Donna was able to answer several of those, actually. Um, I know there were some food waste. There was some um, uh, stuff about... Not enough staff. That was a, a big question that I want to summer just address again. Yeah. You know, I think if you don't, if you're concerned, and everybody is short staff, we're all, all struggling with that. But, you know, I think if you're doing um, breakfast in the classroom, having the kids take the carts down and having the kids bring the carts back, or bring the breakfast down and bring it back certainly really does help. I also think by doing individually wrapped items, it is makes your life very, very simple. And then you can buy the cupped up fruit, the applesauce and the fruit cocktail and things like that already, you know, really cupped up. So it really is not that hard. You know, you can get high school students. We rely on a lot of high school students to come in in the afternoons and they pack up our buckets and we put them in the cooler. So the next morning they're ready to go. So there's other people that you can use to do this. But I think that really in the fact that you don't have to clean your serving lines and you don't have a lot of pans to clean up and all that kind of stuff. In the end, it really is not that bad if you can get the individually wrapped items and and, you know, if you do the breakfast grab and go carts, those are even easier. And um, those carts are very easy to clean up. And again, it doesn't take a lot of staff, two people, one person to restock the cart and one person to click. And, you know, you, you know, our carts at the middle school, we serve about 800, 700 breakfasts and we have three carts. It's not that much staff. And it, and it happens in a matter of 20 minutes. So it is, quick as anything is quicker than them coming to the line and you putting trays out much quicker and much faster. And Don, another uh, question came into the chat box wondering about your participation, how the hot breakfast in the classroom affected your participation. Oh, it just, when we started, when we started breakfast in the classroom, the principal said, we're not going to do it if you're going to do cereal every single day. So I assured him that we were not going to, so we started with hot breakfast, but I can just tell you, just like our supper program, hot is the way to go. Kids get very, I mean, there are, I do have probably 10% of my kids that would eat cereal every single day of the year and never get tired of it. But most of them like the hot breakfast. And when you look at our breakfast grab and go carts, less than 10% pick up the cold breakfast. Now they do like the smoothies, but smoothies are hard to do. For breakfast in the classroom, there are these new little smoothies that um, are, are easy, that are pre-prepared that you can send down to the classroom. But, um, you know, in terms of making smoothies, like we make smoothies, sending them to the classroom is really, really hard. But those little individual smoothie things are um, really easy to send down as, as an option and a choice. So they do like the yogurt and the string cheese and the yogurt and granola. They do like a lot of the cold things. But if given a choice, they would much rather have a sausage biscuit, a chicken biscuit, waffles and, and fruitles and things like that, definitely. So it'll at least double your participation, I would say. And then Donna, we just have another question in the chat. Do you want to read that? I'll have you read it instead of me because it's Okay, let long. me go down. Um, okay, no, I don't, you know, the hot items are the easiest thing in the whole world to prepare because you take the, the box out and you put them on your on your sheet pans and and then you pull the sheet pans out and you put them in the oven. And, you know, if you're if your classes are typically, you know, 20 and then you just you open the bag and you just push 20 sausage biscuits in there and it's ready to go. So 
No, our, our, we don't have any pushback. I think the hot items are so easy to put in the bags. I almost think the cold items, the yogurt and all those kinds of things are, except for cereal maybe, are, um, you know, we don't do some, some certain things. I'm not going to mention what they are, but some really, really sweet things that are cold, we just don't do. And maybe those would be easier. But I, as a dietitian, I try and do um, stick to the, you know, with the new guidance coming out, there's a chance that we not, may not be able to do a lot of really, really sweet things. So I think all of y'all need to be probably getting ready to be doing hot because if you don't and you have to limit your menu to Cinnabons and, you know, all those cold, sweet things, neutral grain bars and all those things, we may not be able to do those. So I think transitioning to hot is another good reason. But I do not think my staff would tell you that it's not any more work. You know, change is hard, but this is what I tell my staff by increasing participation, then if there is more staff available, we're able to hire more staff. So by the having more participation, you you qualify for more staff if you can find them. And I know all of y'all are struggling like I am to find staff. Again, kids, college kids, get some college kids. You don't care what time of day they come in to get your breakfast ready for you and put it in the freezer or the cooler. If they have an opening in their classes from, you know, nine to 11 in the morning, they can come in and get breakfast ready for the next day. College kids love the flexibility. Next semester, they may be, have availability from one to three. That still works for breakfast the next day. It doesn't matter. So look, look at your college students too. They like having the flexibility. And we're nice people too. I love that, Donna. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull from the questions that people submitted when okay. they registered. One is on just best practices and creative ideas for training teachers for breakfast in the classroom and how to really get them trained well. Yeah, so I do the, um, is it a meal or not a meal? So I flash up all of these trays and I, and I put items on it and it's like deal or no deal, is it a meal or no meal? So I do PowerPoints and I ask them, you know, is this, is this a reimbursable? Is this not a reimbursable meal? Um, you know, and I think they kind of like, like the fun of that. And, um, I've actually had them come down and um, I've put out all this, these food items and I've had them come down and build, you know, reimbursable meals, put together a meal that's reimbursable to see if they can do it. And I've had them plan some menus and, you know, I think explaining to them why it's important to have breakfast, what the regs are, you know, what, why do we have to serve? They, they don't understand why do y'all serve so much bread and grains? You know, they, you know, why are your meals so starchy? Well, I explain to them what the regs are and, and the nutrition that comes with, with the whole grains and things like that. So I think making them understand you know, what the regs are and why we have to do it. And, but I think getting them involved um, by deal or no, meal or no meal, doing PowerPoints and, and, and games, having them plan menus. And then, you know, sometimes they'll complain about the menu and I'll say, plan a menu for me, come up with an idea. I'm glad to do it. And do they ever know they don't because they, you know, I mean, we offer so many choices. I think they are so spoiled, but I think, you know, if you can offer fresh fruit and do some things that get the kids excited, you know, every now and then we do blueberries and strawberries and we package them in our little machines, our desk, our tabletop machines. And, and the kids really get excited about that. The teachers really get excited about it. So I think doing anything like that, but, but doing the training and making sure they understand, I always tell them that I, I operate five restaurants is what I tell them. I don't get a dime from the school board, just like y'all don't. And that, you know, I have, to, we have to be accountable and we, I have to make ends meet and why we do all these things because they don't understand why the kids have second and thirds. And so I tell them, okay, you want second and third, get somebody else to take the breakfast that didn't want it and then they can share. So, you know, just problem solve with them, make sure they understand what the rules and regulations are and that we're all that we're a team together. I'm trying to get their kids to want to eat and, and they need to work with me and trying to make my program successful. So when I'm audited that when they come into the classroom and they watch them and, you know, also if only five chicken biscuits are gone, then I know a lot of five kids didn't, you know, how many kids didn't eat. So you have to kind of 
be accountable there. Tell them, you know, you have rules and regulations and you're, you know, trying to improve your test scores and we're all in this together. I think you probably answered the other remaining question that came in through the registration process. And it's please clarify offer versus serve implications of breakfast in the classroom, what is required and how to do it. And really it sounds like you just answered that, but you just train the teachers on how to understand the meal components really well. You do. And you know, you're gonna, you put out a menu and they have access to that menu. And so, you know, they, whether it's on their phones or whether it's on the TV or, you know, I think the thing is having the principal share what's for breakfast today. Today is, you know, sausage biscuits and bananas and juice and milk. And we hope that all kids enjoy. And don't forget, you know, because at lunch, you're training the kids to take a fruit or vegetable. And it's the same thing. So when I train them, I train them on lunch, too, because I also don't want the teachers forcing the kids to, to take something that they're not going to eat. So like if they if they don't want milk, they don't have to take milk, but they have to take the chicken biscuit and the fruit, the juice and the fruit. So, you know, making sure they understand that they don't have to take certain things, but 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 they can only really refuse one thing. And so the other thing is I say, let them give it away. As long as they take it and they sit down at their desk, if they don't want the banana, they can give it to somebody else. Somebody's always gonna want their juice or something. So it's it's just explaining them why we're here, that we're, you know, we're in this together. And then I have a question, Donna. You had mentioned grilled cheese and pizza sticks. And I'm wondering how many other like sort of lunch and dinner flavors are sometimes incorporated into breakfast foods because people often have breakfast for dinner, but you all have dinner for breakfast or lunch for breakfast. Well, you're so right. So I, when we first started this program, I went to my manufacturers and I said, what could y'all do? So we did mini cheeseburgers. So we did little mini cheeseburgers and they wrapped them up for us. Now they were very expensive, but sometimes you do an expensive item to get the kids excited about eating breakfast and increases your participation. We did little mini hot dogs. And I mean, I think you can think of anything, you know, everybody eats pizza for breakfast. So you could do regular, you know, pizza, but you'd have to wrap it. But, you know, there, there are certain kind of pizza that comes for breakfast. But I think, think about what your kids' favorite items are. And, you know, I think we have to be culturally appropriate. Now, you know, here in the South, it's grits and, and sausage and biscuits. But in other parts of the country, it's going to be burritos and taquitos. And, you know, I don't know. I know taquitos, those, you know, things are so popular. You could do those for breakfast. If they meet the requirements, there's nothing to say that it has to be a breakfast food, whatever gets the kids excited about eating breakfast. So I think think outside the box and, um, you know, whatever the kids, you could do chicken nuggets for breakfast. You know, one, one meat, you know, you could do chicken nuggets and a roll. You could do chicken nuggets and a biscuit. I mean, it, it could be, you, you can be as creative as you want. And what kid wouldn't get excited about coming in and going, oh my gosh, mom, you know what we had for breakfast? Then we had chicken nuggets for breakfast. So get them excited um, and, and find out what they like. And that's why doing the taste test, but also finding out from your vendor, what are popular items? They know, they know what they sell the most of. And then another question came into the chat box. It says, how do you deal with unclaimed meal components not returning to the kitchen? And then she goes on to say, teachers keeping fruit or entree options in the classroom, but not claiming on sheets. Yes, they do that. And you know what? I'll have to be really honest with that. I just have to look the other way. I mean, the I go in the classroom and I open the refrigerator doors. A lot of them have little refrigerators in there or I open the cabinet or whatever, or they'll, they'll just honestly tell me, we keep the Nutri-Grain bars that are left over because when the kids get hungry, we need them for a snack. We, we keep this, we keep that. And, the, and that's why when I say, and you complain about roaches, you say I'm providing roaches when you have all this food you're keeping already, you know, you're keeping. So I just have to look the other way. I, I try and preach it every time I do this training at the beginning of the year and I explain to them that you know, I want to be financially viable. And when y'all keep all of this food, then I have to send more food. And that's food that I could reuse. And 
then if I get in trouble financially, guess who's going to have to pay for it? The school board. And then guess who's not going to have money for y'all to have raises and to have books and to have new computers and stuff. So you want me to be financially successful so that I don't take any money out of the out of the budget. So I just try and explain to them, but I do know that they do it. And I do know, especially in my area where the kids are so poor that they don't have snacks and they do get, you know, cranky or whatever. And sometimes giving them a little bag of Cheetos, I mean, not Cheetos, the Cheez-Its or whatever, they keep a lot of that stuff will calm them down and make them behave better in classrooms. So I just have to kind of let it go because I realize my increased participation is helping me financially and and I, I just have to let it go. But it definitely does happen. And, and it's like I said, I get really angry when they say, well, we don't want to do it because of their roaches. I want to say, well, can I open your desk drawer and see what's in there? They have a lot of food in there. And what are the, the hot ticket items that your schools love right now in terms of hot breakfast? What are the ones okay. that you just keep ordering? So I don't know why these fruitals are like the end thing. They've got apples and cherries in them and they've got a, you know, kind of a pastry crust and a little bit of um, icing on them. The mini cinnies, our, our schools love the mini cinnies. Um, I would say sausage biscuits will pizza, you know, any kind of pizza, kids like any kind of pizza. But for some reason, they love the twin biscuits, the twin sausage biscuits. I don't know why they're just easier to eat. And then our smoothies, we do the um, juice alive smoothies, which count as a, um, it's just yogurt and this juice and it's combined and they um, count as a protein and as a fruit, it's, it's a juice, but a fruit. And um, they come in like 15 different flavors and our kids universally will drink a smoothie every single morning. And that's something that gets the teachers really fired up about breakfast in the classroom when you can do, give smoothies for them. Now, if we do grab and go, we do not allow the teachers to get free breakfast because they don't have any responsibility because the kids take it down and, uh, and the kids throw it out. So if we're doing grab and go, we're doing all the work. And so they do not get free breakfast. But if it's breakfast in the classroom and they're doing the counting and claiming and all that kind of stuff, then I do provide them. But a lot of our teachers buy our smoothies and stuff when it's grab and go and they don't get it for free. But when they do get it for free, they really, really do like them. So those little bottled smoothies that you can get for the elementary breakfast in the classroom are a big, big hit with the kids because you just screw the tops off and they just think that's really, really cool. Um, but I'd say chicken biscuits too. But those items right now are hard to come by. And I'm, I'm really concerned with the new school meal standards coming out that these companies are going to need to be ramping up because we're not going to be able to do as many, the mini cinnies and um, the fruitals and things like that, I think are going to be classified as desserts. Um, but those, those, those hot items are, and the kids really do like the breakfast bagels too. But, you know, in other parts of the country, I think the burritos may be really, really popular, too. Some school districts do the eggs, the omelets, the cheese omelets. And, um, you know, I think a scrambled egg sandwich, if you can figure out how to do it, would be amazing. But I, I think you can be really creative. And with those bags, it's really easy to bag up stuff. And um, it, it just saves a lot of money. So if you have a really slow day of, at work, which I know, when do we ever have slow day? But if it's pizza day, guys, it's not that hard. Then I'd be bagging up grilled cheese sandwiches and putting them in the freezer. They're ready to go. Yeah, it sounds like prep is the name of the game here. Um, oh, I had one more question I was going to ask that I totally just blanked on. Um, well, while I'm thinking, oh, I was going to ask people on the webinar to put in your favorite. Yes, item. what, what did their kids to... like? Yeah, we would love to hear that. So add that into the chat so we can have a running list of favorite items that are from around the country. And while we're waiting for uh, folks to- Pancake on a it, stick, yes, yeah. pancake on a stick. Yep, they do love that. Yeah. And that one's been pretty easy to get. We rarely get shorted on pancake on a stick and that'll be a good one. Yogurt parfaits at all ages, yes. So- um, yogurt parfaits and you can get the, the granola individually bagged 
so um you know sometimes we just send down the yogurt and the um granola and a thing of string cheese um so yeah donuts yeah who doesn't like a donut <laughs> egg cheese taco burrito good steve i'd love to know where you're from ah bagel and cream cheese and concha mexican wheat bread that sounds great yeah cereal they just really do love the cereal but yeah, so I'll tell you a funny story about the first time I ever served bagels and cream cheese in our breakfast program. The kids came back and told the manager, said, Mrs. Jones, those are the hardest donuts I've ever eaten. The kids had no idea what a bagel was, and they thought it was a donut. <laughs> so you got to make sure you kind of um, prep people um, when you're bringing out new things. That's great. Yeah, that they I want to try the Concha Mexican sweet bread. That sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah, know, know your, your audience. audience. That's right. You do need to know your audience. And I obviously didn't. I grew up on bagels and cream cheese and thought the whole world knew what bagels and cream cheese were, but nope. That's great. And, you know, we've started with um, doing some English muffins and um, some bagels and stuff, just trying to do something a little different. And um, the, the kids have never had English muffins. So, but, you know, those are the egg McMuffins. So if you can get those egg patties, you can get the USDA egg patties and put them in there. And, you know, that with some cheese, that's not a bad breakfast, but you got to make those usually. Pigs in a blanket. Yeah. Okay. Hannah, would you advance to the next slide? I believe I have a list of the upcoming webinars that people can take a look at. Still feel free to put stuff in the chat. Um, it's fun to see, you know, what the favorite items are. Uh, around the country. But here are the upcoming webinars that I just want to highlight on May 1st. We have making the most of a moment non congregate meal service in rural areas. That's a big one. And then Tuesday, May 23rd, strategies to improve the summer meals experience for kids and families. Crunch wraps hold well. What are Donna, crunch wraps? You know okay, what is that? While we wait for an explanation of crunch wrap. I'll say that final webinar, June 20th, year round meals, tips for transitioning from summer to after school meals. And then um, next slide, Hannah. Yes, all of these can be found on our Center for Best Practices website. This is what the homepage looks like. And then you can just go to the little webinar button at the top. I circled it in green. Um, and then when we, when I end the webinar today, you will have a little survey that pops up. These should just take a few minutes. We would love your feedback because this really truly helps us um, cater to what you're looking for and let us know if we're doing a good job and how we can improve. So please be sure to take that survey. Oh, okay. So we have an explanation of what the crunch wraps are. Flour tortillas filled with sausage, eggs, and cheese folded in, folded in on itself like a dish. Okay. And then Steve, the all all the recorded webinars, the webinars that we had in the past are also on that webinar page. So all upcoming webinars, you can register for there on that webinars. You click that little webinars button and you'll see all the different webinars coming up. And then all the webinars that we've had previously will be recorded with the slides and you can have free access there. And anything else from you, Donna? What a fantastic uh, webinar. Thank you so much for all your insight and experience. This has been excellent. Um, well, it was fun. And thank you all for participating and joining today. And I look forward to hearing all the great things y'all are doing feeding your kids because it is worth it. You know, your staff may want to, you know, they don't like change, but once they do it, my staff loved it. Like I said, they lost weight. So who doesn't like that? <laughs> <It's a bonus. laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Donna. Thanks everyone for attending. Have a good day.